Hey guys, it's Skater Gamer here, back again with another episode of Angels with Scare the Wings. So, what did we do last episode? It's been a day since I recorded it and I don't remember. Um, we went on the date with Anna, that's right. I was going to go talk to Lauren this, this time, because we haven't seen much of him. Alright, I went to the bar Lauren had suggested as our meeting place. When I looked around, I saw Bryce sitting at a table, talking to someone I couldn't see. I lingered on him for a second, but soon spotted Lorem in the corner of my eye. So Bryce is here too. Hmm. There you are. It's good to see you. I thought you might not show up. It's been like, what, two days since you visited me? <laughs> I almost didn't. <laughs> I'm glad you came anyway. I'm kind of surprised you wanted to meet me here. Didn't take this the wrong way, but are you even old enough to drink? What are you talking about? Oh, I see. I can assure you I am a fully grown adult. My species doesn't get much bigger than this. Speaking of which, are you fully grown yet? How big do humans usually get and how do you stack up, comparatively speaking? Oh, would you mind if I took some notes? Before we get to that, you haven't even told me yet what exactly all this is for. Are you sure you're not a reporter? If I was, Sebastian wouldn't have let me meet you in the first place. And I thought the uniform was just a clever disguise. It's real though, Sebastian knows I work for the local post office. Excuse me, but this still doesn't really tell me anything about why I'm here. You're a postman who wants to interview me. For what exactly? Sorry, I guess I got ahead of myself here. Maybe a full introduction is in order. And after that, you can still decide whether you want to go through with this or not. Well, yeah, I still don't know you, Lorem. Ipsum. <laughs> yeah, sure, go ahead. I recently graduated college with a degree in computing. I moved in here with a good friend of mine. This town doesn't exactly offer the best opportunities to put my degree to good use, though. Then why move here in the first place? Living in the city can be very expensive. I can always move later when I get a job there. I've got other plans right now, though. I'm working on a video game. Ooh, nice. Yeah, is that what it's all about? You got it. Video games and computers are just starting to catch on in places like this town. Making good content will be very important to give a good first impression. And humans have always been part of our media. Books, movies, and now games. With you on our side, this could be an amazing opportunity. I mean, it, it depends on the type of game and how you want to portray the humans. Well, uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. I mean, I like video games. So I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Y route. I don't know. You don't seem so thrilled about doing this anymore. Besides, your job must be really stressful, and you're probably already in the spotlight all the time. And now to top it all off, you've got some postman harassing you for an interview. If you wanted to leave, I'd get that. I'm, I'm not gonna leave on you like that. I'm not that mean. Yes, thank you. At least I won't have to be so careful now. With a reporter, I'd have to worry about things being misinterpreted or being taken out of context. I mean, I still kind of do. You should still be careful. What you tell me now will influence how your entire species will be represented in my game. Don't worry though, I'll treat this delicate matter with the required finesse. Why do you want to make this game in the first place? I've always wanted to make a video game. I've had this idea for a while, and it seems now is the right time to do it. It's almost as if you arrived at the perfect moment. I don't know, don't you think my visit will overshadow your efforts? People may not be so interested in playing a game about humans anymore if they had a real one show up. Good point, but the vast majority won't get to meet you personally anyway. If I say I did and modelled the humans in the game after you, people would flock to it to get a similar experience. So now I'm part of a viral marketing campaign. Great. I mean, I've I've already, I've 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 already got like a very big reputation on my head at the moment as as the human ambassador, and and I'm also working with the police on this whole murder mystery matter. <laughs> That's just a necessary evil, I think. They have to know somehow. Okay, but why focus on humans? What makes us so important? If there's one thing that people here love, it's humans. 
It doesn't matter if they just see them in the media or believe in them as mythical creatures. For me, humans were always real. I just didn't know whether I'd get a chance to meet one myself. I guess I can cross that one off the bucket list. Now that we're here, I can tell you no expense will be spared to make our portrayal as humans as accurate as possible. It does seem really passionate. For good reason. I just love humans. If you say it like that, it actually ends up sounding pretty weird. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> a bit... A bit over the top with your... Your passion for the humans. Besides, what if I turn out to be a horrible person? I mean... We've already got Razor, who's already been a bit of an issue at the moment. It wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't base my opinion of an, in, of an entire species on interactions with a single individual. What if we're all pieces of crap? <laughs> Which a lot of us are. Then what is your current opinion of us based on? Just the myths we have and the previous portrayals of humans in our media. But I suppose that's why I'm here talking with you right now. I want the truth and all of it. Telling you all of it might not be such a good idea. Yup. Oh yeah, I guess that would take a lot more time than we have today. More than time. <laughs> anyway, what's the actual game about? What do you do? It's a community simulation game. It all starts with the player mo character moving into a procedurally generated community, which is inhabited by all kinds of mythical creatures, humans included. Mythical creatures like humans. Mm -hmm. Not only are the towns you move into unique, but the inhabitants are too. There are a variety of traits that get randomised, both in looks and personality. There are many things you can do, but it's very open-ended and you can live your life there however you want to. I mean, it is kind of interesting. It is. At least, I hope others feel the same way about it. What other mythical creatures are there besides humans? That's actually a good point, because a lot of mythical creatures are like very like similar to dragons. Like you've got like emphasis or ha whatever they're called. You've got um, yeah. I haven't worked that out yet, but humans alone give us a lot of material to work with. I mean, just use stuff like centaurs or something like that. <laughs> How so? The question of the mythical human can be tackled in a variety of ways. There are many different interpretations of what humans are like. For example, in general, the mythical human can be divided into three categories. Firstly, the human is a physical creature. Secondly, the human is a non-physical entity. And thirdly, the human is a spiritual being. Let's start with the physical aspects. Sure, since one of our myths tells us that the human who created us eventually turned into a dragon, there is a lot of room for interpretation as to how similar humans actually are to dragons. I can see you don't have wings, but most of us are able to create fire in some way, or at least have a breath weapon. How about you? Well, we can create fire, just not in a breath-related or magical type of way. Let's, we, we can still create fire, so let's, let's, let's do that. Not really, having hands that are dexterous enough to do that is remarkable though. It is a bit strange though, because our myths also say you have that ability to us. Well, we don't. Maybe it's meant to be taken literally, meaning that, w meaning that when that ability was given to us, you lost it. Or maybe we never had it in the first place. Humans are known to have created a lot of things out of nothing. After all, we only needed to discover how to create and use fire, because we didn't have a natural ability to do so. We have a proverb that sums this up really well. What is it? Necessity is the mother of invention. So a lack of natural abilities drove innovation forward. What an interesting thought. Here's another thing. You may have many different images of humans, but in the end, only one could be right. It's also possible that what you've been led to believe about humans doesn't actually refer to us at all. Are you implying that you aren't human? No, I'm just saying that if you really had been in contact with humans before as your myths imply, they would need to belong to the same species as me, and thus be very similar to myself. If they aren't, then either they weren't humans at all, or have very different origins. 
So you see there is a possibility that our humans and your humans may be something different altogether. I suppose you are right in the way that our images of humans are very inconsistent. They certainly can't all be humans in the way that we would refer to a single species. The name should probably be reserved for yours. And we haven't even touched on the other two categories of humans. What did you call them again? Non-physical human entities and spiritual humans. What's the difference? Honestly, the definitions get a bit muddled here. Going by conventional belief, a ghost could be a human who has died and thus changed into a different form. We would call this a spiritual human. An angel, on the other hand, would be classified as a non-physical entity. What do you know about angels? Angels basically look like humans with wings. Their existence in ancient scripts was used to lend some credence to the theories about humans having become dragons. Because of the wings. Exactly. But some of your dragon species don't have wings either. Yes, as I said, once you start delving into that kind of stuff, it all becomes very convoluted. When we met, you also told me something about a four-headed human. I remember that. <laughs> Right, with that we go to the realm of creatures that just don't make much sense at all. So in the end you have a lot of different ideas whose only connection to each other is that you use the word human to describe them in some way. And they share at least some basic characteristics. You fit those as well by the way. What are they? You certainly are not a reptile like us, but you don't look like a conventional mammal either. We are mammals, though. Yes, but you are so different from other mammals, we know that, ultimately, you are quite unique. We don't know any other sentient mammals. Strangely enough, we have plenty of human-like creatures in our mythologies as well. Oh, do tell. You've already mentioned ghosts, but some other ones include dwarves, giants, fairies, and blemies. I think I've heard of most of these before, but what is a blemies? Essentially, a blemies is a human without a head. There are also a lot of half-creatures that share some characteristics with humans and other animals. Like merhumans? Sure. Lastly, there are humans that are said to be able to shapeshift into human form. Strangely enough, some of our dragon myths said they could shapeshift into humans or that certain countries' royalty are descended from dragons. That would imply that they are genetically compatible with humans. We're not even in the same... F class, like... One's reptile, one's mammalian. No. No. Sounds rather outlandish if you ask me. We certainly can't shapeshift like that. Suppose that's why they're just myths. Right. To be fair, we do have a lot of myths that seem quite out there as well compared to what you're like. Anyway, how come you know so much about myths? All part of being an ambassador. Not only did I learn about dragon myths in order to compare them to what you're like, but I also studied myths about creatures that are similar to humans so I could find out how similar they were to yours. Well, you're doing an excellent job so far, and it's bound to help me a lot with my game as well. You're going to put all of that into the game? Let's just say it gives me some excellent material to work with. I thought you wanted to give an accurate portrayal of humans, not just collect myths. Does have a good point there. One species will certainly be modelled after you, but that doesn't mean we can't introduce some variety with the others. People will love it if we also bring some of the more unusual myths to life. But since we also want each of the normal human characters to be unique, I'd like to know how much variety that there really is within your species. I've seen Razor before, so comparing him to you already gives me a bit of an idea. But how far do these differences go, exactly? When we arrived here, you asked me if I was old enough to drink. That leads me to believe that your average human must be a lot taller. That's true. You could say that Razor would be about average for an adult. But we also think that dragons are a lot larger, so... <laughs> Not that it would be impossible to get a good deal bigger than him or even smaller than you, but those cases are rather rare and usually the result of medical conditions. What about colours? Are there any humans who are blue like me? Um. No. <laughs> there is a certain spectrum of skin colours that can be lighter or darker. But so far I've seen a lot more variety in the dragons here. We do have a number of different eye colours though. As for things that aren't immediately visible, we also have different blood types, but I assume you know about that. We certainly have those as well. Some people even believe your blood type influences your personality. 
That, on the other hand, is news to me. Anything else you want to know? Phew, we already got so much. I'll have to think about if and how we can work all this into the game. Have you worked on any other games before? I worked on a few small projects during the course of my studies and also interned at a studio before. This is on a completely different level though. It's my game so I'm the one calling the shots here. It's a very different thing than just making a few graphics when you're part of a bigger team, for sure. How long exactly have you been working on this? It must be several months now. I've got everything planned out and a lot of the groundwork has already been done. The most difficult things are the characters themselves and to make sure all of the details are accurate. What if it doesn't work out? What do you mean? Well, you're investing a certain amount of time and money into making this game. Ideally, you would make back your investment and hopefully get some profit on top of that. If the goal is to make money, sure. However, I just wanted to try my hand at doing something like this. If some people are going to enjoy the end result, that's great. Don't forget that I'll also have something I can put on my resume. At the very least, it, it'll have been a good learning experience. With that attitude, I suppose you really don't have anything to lose. I can always look for another job, and maybe I'll end up working at a game studio. But I think once I've started doing something like that, I might not get this opportunity again. So it's now or never, huh? In a nutshell, yes. And that all works out with your career job? Sure, I can support myself this way, and I'm not really under any pressure since I don't have any deadlines to keep. Deadlines are a good way to ensure something gets done though. You're right about that. It's something where balance is important, I think. I set deadlines for myself, but I don't have to worry about the project breaking down if I don't meet certain milestones at a certain time. What kind of tools are you using to make it? If I consider what some of your species look like, I'm having a hard time imagining how the bigger ones could program a game. While we do have devices tailored to each individual species, I can't deny that my dexterous hands make it a lot easier compared to some of the others. One downside is that I have to keep my nails short or else using the keyboard gets a bit cumbersome. I imagine you'd have to be careful with those while working as a courier anyway. You're right about that. One wrong move and you've suddenly shredded the letter you were just going to hand to someone. Luckily that kind of thing doesn't really happen to me anymore. Not only because of the shorter nails, but once you've worked there for a while, you just learn to be more careful. Have you been working as a courier for long? I just got this job a few months ago, but I had a part-time summer job at the post office when I was growing up. My species is perfectly suited for the job, so they were glad to have me on board. Of course, being able to fly is a big plus. My size means I can't deliver any big packages, but I often get assigned to urgent letters that have to be delivered as soon as possible. It's getting late, maybe we should leave it at that for today. We were up at like midnight with Anna and it suddenly turned back into the middle of the day and now we're back at almost night again. Yeah, I should probably head back to my apartment before it gets too dark. I got more than enough material to work with. Thanks a lot. Don't worry about it. I'll just consider it a public service. Thank you for your time, really. I promise I won't bother you again. What are you talking about? Well, I can't help but feel like you still thought this was a waste of time. I had to admit, I was kind of annoyed about the whole thing. I guess it showed. Don't get me wrong, I'm still incredibly grateful that you stuck around until the end. I'm just saying it won't happen again. Okay. I really should be going now. Take care. Yeah, you too. So, Lorem is making a game about us. About humans. Interesting. And chapter 3. Ready going straight into this now. It's raining. Right, for, I, I wanna I wanna have a look at this because as I was when I closed the game last time, I noticed this. I wanna see oh, okay. Oh rip. Alright, so so you kinda wanna have a good relationship and and you know interaction with everyone. I upset Lorem, and after the fight we had with Anna, I don't think things are going well with her. I haven't talked to a Dean much yet. Might talk to her sometime. I'm going good with um with Remy. The morning sun declared the arrival of a new day and woke me from my vivid dreams. Memories of my home, enclosed within the towering perimeter wall, raced through my head. The peaceful landscape outside the apartment window stood in defiance of these old thoughts. Rolling hills and blue sky were familiar to me now, and the purity of the sight gave me hope. Ding dong! It's here! 
It's Sebastian. Sam, this please come with me. What's going on? You sound serious. The chief will explain everything once we arrive. Okay. I'm really unsure about doing the Bryce scenes because we've already had a bunch of... We've been doing a lot with him. Uh, with Why are we here? Thanks, Sebastian. You can deal with the situation here while I talk to Smams, alright? Of course. Smams, I've got some really bad news. Well, what is it? You know Anna, right? Oh no. What's, what's she done now? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this. Those few words were enough. Dread sank in and I already knew. Don't. I ignored his words and walked past him. Well then. I was not expecting that. Okay. Feel kind of bad. We had that massive argument the night before. Hmm. When I turned the corner, there was no mistaking her. Anna was haphazardly covered by a sheet, leaving a tail and bloodstained hand exposed. In the end, she didn't even deserve full discretion. Are you okay? I don't know. Is there anything that I can do? Just get this over with. Bryce gave me a concerned look, but then nodded. And here's more bad news. The blood we found on the first victim in town matches the DNA evidence found on the second victim at the power facility. Furthermore, the murder weapon and method appear to be the same across all three victims. That's going to be a big problem for you. Why is that? Because with these three murders, Razor now qualifies as a serial killer. We won't be able to keep this whole thing quiet for much longer. Higher authorities, including the ministry in charge of your whole visit, will know about this soon. I have no idea what will happen once they do. I don't want to worry you, but we can be sure that action will be taken soon. I've been considering this possibility for a while. I think it might be best if you went back to your own world for now. This way we can take action before the Ministry does, and before this all becomes public. If we wait, we don't know what they will do or how the public will react. With everything going on, it's too dangerous for you to stay here. No. No. This would be the worst possible time for me to leave. We've given up our PDAs and hardly have anything to show for it. We are owed several more generators, and let's not forget that the razor is still missing. If I leave now, the only thing I return home with is my life. I'll have lost everything else. We need those generators, Bryce. I have no idea if your authorities will continue to uphold our deal, or what they'll do to Razor, but I'm not leaving until this is over. If that's your decision, then so be it. Anyway, let's get back on track. I called you here for a reason, Smams. In addition to the matter, several things were stolen. Among them, your PDAs, batteries, and some components used to build generators. Does that ring any bells? Not really. Razor might have some knowledge of electronics, but I doubt he is enough to assemble one of our, your generators, even if he had the parts. Strange. Even so, it's fair to assume Razor's involvement at this point. No one else has a greater motive to seal the PDAs, especially after what happened between him and Maverick. Unless someone wanted to frame Razor in order to sabotage this whole operation. Do you really believe that? Hey, I'm just saying it's possible. I'll shelf that idea under possible, but unlikely. Hey Chief, are we done here? Pretty much, why do you ask? We just got a message from the higher-ups. You and Smanza to report to the Ministry of Culture and Arts immediately. Immediately as in right now? Yeah, apparently. What's going on? To be frank, I don't know. This is an extraordinary situation. And now that it's getting out of hand, they might want, they must want to address it. So it's the worst possibility. If you expect the worst, at least you won't be disappointed. Sebastian, you can finish up here and go to the ministry when you're done. We'll probably have to make some arrangements after this meeting. Actually, Anna's dead, what, what, do, what does this say? Oh, she's gone. Oh no. Not gonna lie, that's actually kind of ominous. That's actually kind of creepy. Oh no! Oh, I feel bad now. Oh, I feel real bad. Oh no! Sure thing, Chief. Let's go then, shall we? 
It's not like we have a choice. Oh, who's this? I like the earrings. That's interesting. Oh, I like that. Oh, this is a mirror. That was quicker than I expected. I wouldn't have minded waiting out here a little longer. Greetings, Minister. Greetings. Shall we go inside for our official business? No, I've got everything I need right here. Get so stuffy inside on hot days. My assistant doesn't seem to mind, but I prefer the fresh air. I'd rather just stay right here unless you have any objections. Well, I know I haven't exactly been up to date in regards to Razor's sudden disappearance, but to get the message today that he is a confirmed serial killer was quite shocking. Frankly, I'm curious as to why the facts of this case have been withheld from me for so long. Simply because they weren't within your jurisdiction. These murders were strictly a police matter. Only with the amount of new evidence, namely the DNA and blood we found, and of these three murders now being linked together and to him, did your ministry have to become involved. So Razor's involvement is now undeniable. I'm afraid so, Minister. Facts are nothing to be afraid of. Though in light of all this, I'm starting to worry about my personal safety. I'm sure a lot of people would if this went public. <laughs> With our thick hides, I don't think our species has much to fear if we consider the murder weapon. Oh, so they have stronger scales. Interesting. I'm interested to see, like, how many different, you know, dragon species they've got here. Because they've got ones, like, small ones with wings, quadrupeds with wings, quadrupeds without, like, thick hides, um, wingless dragon... The, there's a lot of interesting variety here. I kind of like it. Speak for yourself. You don't think someone of my standing needs protection? Well, for sure. If you're worried about your personal safety, we could look into an escort for you. Good. Considering all the murders took place during the night, I'll certainly need it. Long days are endemic in my line of work. But that's enough about myself. We now face the question of what should be done about Razor and Smems. Minister, we continue our hunt for Razor every day. As a matter of fact, Smams has been helping us do so for a while now. Is that so? One human a murderer, the other a detective. Interesting. And how do we know Smams isn't following a similar plan to Razor's? Whatever that may be. Similar concerns were leveled by Razor's escort, Maverick. It was his overreaction that caused Razor to run away in the first place. Let the human talk for once, Chief. Please, Mems, enlighten me. You and Razor came here on the same mission, and the situation has escalated beyond our expectations. What you tell me now will determine the actions I'll take on this matter. Maybe you should start by telling me your side of the events from the beginning. Razor was fine during his early days here. Things only went wrong after you arrived. I opened my mouth, but Bryce spoke first, determined to defend me. Actually, the problems that caused all this were apparent even then. How so? Maverick suspected Razor of planning something, but I didn't think he had a case. Well, did he? No, what he had was a suspicion. The night he followed Razor, he found both him and Smams at the portal. The humans intended to send one of their promised generators through, but there was a confrontation that ended with both Maverick and Smams wounded, and Razor running away. Razor's been missing ever since. I've read the reports already, Chief. The question is, did Maverick cause this, or did he just fail to prevent it? I have no way of knowing that, Minister. You just mentioned your apparent knowledge of problems back then. Problems may not have been the right word. Let's just say Maverick's attitude was not helpful during that encounter. Why did you choose Maverick as his escort in the first place? Protection for the human ambassador was my greatest concern when I made that decision, and Maverick was the most capable individual in that regard. Well, that worked out nicely, didn't it? You also seem to think that Maverick shouldn't have remained Razor's escort. Is that true? Yes. Had I paid more attention to the warning signs, this situation may have been avoided. So you accept responsibility for the incident? Yes, Minister. Now, let us get back to the topic of Smems. Razor was your partner in humanity's mission to come to this world. 
His list of criminal activities not only includes murder, but also the theft of generators, electronic components, and the PDAs your people gave to us. I understand why Bryce would reason that you could help the investigation, but we have no other choice but to be suspicious of Ray's partner. What was your motivation when you agreed to help us? My best bet at finding the truth, I guess. I thought Ray's involvement was undeniable at this point. That may be true, but we still don't have the whole picture. We don't know if others are involved or his reasons. I just want to know why. Well, after reading up on the whole situation and hearing both your accounts, I believe that Smams is trustworthy. Nevertheless, I think Smams presents a great risk. Why is that? After this meeting, I will hold a press conference to inform the public of the current situation. The people must know of the danger posed by Razor. No matter what Bryce and I think about your involvement, the public could feel differently. You, me and Bryce will have to face the backlash resulting from this information becoming public. And what's more, Smams, you might be in real danger yourself. Razor himself may come to silence you once he learns that you are helping us. Oh, Razor too could be a problem. Didn't think about that. Or consider the public uproar from those who would question your involvement. Yep. All things considered, it would be for the best if you return to your own world until the situation has been resolved. I came to the very same conclusion, Minister. Then with your support, this is what shall be done. Please don't. You don't agree? If you send me back now, this diplomatic relationship is over. I'd have to admit defeat to humanity. There is no way I can return without new generators, our PDAs, or Razor. Maybe you could explain to them what a great choice of an ambassador Razor was. But I was his partner, so in a way, he's my responsibility. I can't just go back like this. I'm afraid this is not enough. It certainly doesn't outweigh our reasons for sending you home. Just let me explain. I'll tell you everything. Years ago, our world was prosperous. Our technology was far more advanced than yours, even. Computers not only graced every household, but every single person. It was the age of information. Even children had the power to access the most advanced knowledge at their fingertips. With our PDAs, our interconnectedness with other people and our environment was greater than ever. From locomotion to re repetitious work and household chores, many processes were automated to such a degree that, except for our jobs and hobbies, there were nothing that needed to be done by a person anymore. Even the concept of someone wielding a weapon was outdated, as wars were no longer fought by people, but machines. Looking back, it was probably the single most prosperous time in human history. Exploitation of the environment and other people was at an all-time low, as was crime. Conversely, our technological advancements had drastically changed, had drastically increased it, increased it. <laughs> had drastically increased quality of life. Humans were no longer required for strenuous and repetitive tasks. Education had reached an all-time high, and many new jobs were created. General happiness had reached levels never before seen. Yet one day everything changed. A solar flare that was headed for Earth was detected by an automated monitoring system. It was determined to be so powerful that it dwarfed all others ever recorded in history. We had less than a week to prepare. Chaos hit much earlier than that, as people scrambled to shield themselves and their possessions from the incoming ion storm. On a worldwide level, power lines were switched off, satellites reoriented in space, and planes grounded to mitigate the effects that would hit us. Despite humanity's contingency plan for such an event in all our efforts, we were still not prepared for the sheer magnitude of the solar flare that arrived. It was only then, when our race had become so dependent on technology that we were immeasurably vulnerable against this kind of disaster. That day, a force with the power of 10 billion Hiroshima bombs was unleashed into our atmosphere. Like the dragons know what that is. <laughs> the eyewitness reports from this day were varied as they were terrifying. A huge, beautiful aura could be seen on the horizon before fireballs hurled across the sky. In some places, these lights became so bright that even those asleep at night woke as though the day had already arrived. 
A coronal mass ejection by itself did not have the power to kill anyone directly, but the side effects were disastrous. After the lights in the sky arrived, sparks showered from electrical outlets everywhere, igniting rampant fires in every town and city. Facilities that stored weapons, fireworks, or other explosives became centers of widespread destruction and loss of life. During the next stage, the solar flare started to affect body modifications and caused commonplace pacemakers and nanomachines to fail. 15% of the world's population died as the result of this alone. This backstory is, is intense. Well thought out though, but intense. Once the full power of the waves hit us, however, society as we knew it collapsed in one fell swoop. Power grids on Earth shut down in an instant, as did all the machines that automated our routine tasks. Long distance communication and transport became a thing of the past. Without electrical power, the quality of healthcare plummeted and water and sewage systems were crippled. Diseases we thought defeated centuries ago made their comeback in a most unsightly fashion. Many thought the end of the world had arrived, and away it had. Some people blamed whoever their belief system would allow, angry at the gods that had forsaken them. Others pointed their fingers at our lifestyle in society. Not that anyone was listening. Practically we were back in the Middle Ages. Governments collapsed and were overthrown, and the ensuing power vacuum is filled with groups of people that were sometimes organised, and sometimes not. The few functioning electronic devices left became rare, sought after artifacts over which battles and even wars were fought. Of course there were also wars over resources and territory. The weapon reused was improvised or reclaimed from the days when humans had been present on the battlefield. It had been ages, but people returned to the old bloody ways of war. Humanity is in shambles now. Those that I'd call family and friends now live with me in a giant, mostly self-sufficient city-state of survivors. A huge wall around the perimeter, guarded by militia, prevents any outside interference. It's the only way we can retain a modicum of order. Gangs of raiders and looters run rampant on the outside. They wouldn't hesitate to kill first and ask questions later if they had known about my PDA. Our contained community has flourished for years now. We have homes to live in, crops to grow and livestock to raise, and still have our own automated hospital that runs on salvage generators. Lately those supplies have started to run low, and dangerously so. The power we have is running out, illnesses are spreading through the city, and treatment isn't as available as it used to be. Our population is dropping by the day. We took a great risk to increase the radius of our scouting missions, desperate to find something outside the wall that could help us. You already know the rest of this story. We found the portal, and you, and oh, the solemn music comes in. I love, I love the song. This is probably one of my favorites. I think I've only heard it twice so far in the game, but I love it. Oh man, what are the dragons gonna say about this? And now you know why this whole thing is so important to me. All our hopes lie in acquiring the generators you promised us. The act of sending Razor and me here has, without a doubt, already cost the lives of some people back home. Beyond the city walls is a dead zone. We haven't heard from any other settlements for months now. The state of the rest of our world is unknown. When Razor and I were sent here, my peers made it clear that this was our last chance. If anything happens to us, no more people will be sent. If we can't manage to bring back something that will help, We'll have sealed the fate of the tens of thousands that live in our city. Sorry, Smems, I didn't know. If what you are telling me is true, it unfortunately does not work in your favour. As sad as this situation may be, it gives Razor a motive. Desperate times call for desperate measures, after all. In that vein, it also gives you a motive. Considering the gravity of the human plight, it gives you all the more reason to collaborate with him. I'm not. What Razor is doing is wrong. You can't send me away under these circumstances, because I'm your best bet at finding him. Even so, you would still be in grave danger after we announce Razor's involvement in the murders. I cannot and will not take responsibility for the consequences when I know of the risks. 
better me get in danger here than come back to the human world and let tens of thousands more people die. What about our deal then? In the wake of this new information, and as a sign of goodwill, we will send the generators you are owed through the portal once this is over, under two conditions. Humanity must condemn Razor's actions, and we must reclaim the stolen PDAs. I've changed my mind. You should let Smam stay here. I cannot take your word under, the cons under consideration in this matter, Chief. Taking into account Maverick's actions and your responsibility for them, you will have to be dealt with separately. With my authority as the minister in charge of the human visit, my decision is to have Smams sent back to the human world through the portal. Please. Immediately. Have I done something that... Is, am I, is this actually going to go through? Am I going to be sent back? Chief, please arrange for an escort to take Smams through the portal now. She better change her mind. I think I've done something to cut the story short. I, I don't think, I don't think I'm meant to be going back this early. I feel like it's too soon for this. I could do it myself, Minister. Well, we have our own matters to discuss, Chief, and I would rather get that over with as quickly as possible. In that case, one of my officers should be here at any moment. I arrange for him to meet us here. How handy. Then let us wait for this officer of yours. It didn't take long for Sebastian to arrive. After the situation was explained, he was visibly shocked, but didn't protest when he was given the task of sending me back through the portal. Let's go, Smams. Don't I even get to say goodbye? Let us not waste any more time. You will still be free to send letters after you have arrived on the other side. Just go, Smams. Oh no, I feel bad. I feel like I've... I feel like I made a wrong move somewhere. I don't feel like this should be ending this early. We were silent as Sebastian and I slowly made our way to the portal. With each step I took, I drew closer and closer to the hopelessness waiting for me in the ruins of the human world. All in all, I certainly had a unique experience alongside these dragons. And although this place was filled with as much drama and murder as back home, I would remember this world and all the people I met. I would fondly think back to the days I spent in their comfortable standard of living. A shadow of how humanity used to be. Even without the generators. At the very least, I'd be returning home with a few life lessons. What's going on here? And Dean! Stop this! I want to stay! <laughs> Lawson thought I hadn't even noticed the Dean approach. So none of your concern, please leave. Can't I even get a few minutes before I go? I suppose nobody's stopping us, but make it quick. The human on official business, huh? I don't even know you right now, do I? Don't you remember? I met you in the cafe and at that crime scene. But that's all, isn't it? Unless I miss something, yeah. What are you doing out here? I was just practicing my flying when I spotted you down here. And who would say no to an opportunity to meet one of the humans? Not me. I'm afraid this will be our first and last opportunity to talk. I'm about to leave this world again. Is that so? That's too bad. Let's better make a fir good first impression on Adine. Because we've already stuffed it with Lorem and Anna, who the latter is now dead. Kind of a shame I never got to know you. Wait, does this have something to do with those rumors I heard? Is Razor really a murderer? I'm afraid so. What does that make you? I don't have anything to do with that. I was helping the police find him. Then why are you leaving? It's for my own safety, apparently. This wasn't my decision. But what about Razor? All I could offer was a shrug. I guess they're convinced that they can find him on their own. I'm not sure what to think anymore. Not sure either. I looked over my shoulder and glanced at Sebastian. I should be going now. All right. Goodbye, Smams. Goodbye, Dean. I remember her. There was the witness. There was the witness from Razor's first murder. Did you know her? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say a little. 
Did, did we at least make a good first impression on her? No? Okay, just still neutral. Guess I have to play some of her scenes. Which I think I've missed the opportunity to do so. A few minutes later we arrived at the portal, standing proud as ever in defiance of the elements. How many years had the structure survived before it was found? Hope I can remember how this thing works. Are you joking? Yeah, sorry, I got it. Right, I suppose it's time for us to say goodbye. Let's keep it professional. I don't like to mix personal matters with work. He looked away and I shrugged. Go ahead and turn it on then. Would you stand between the pillars, please? I'm actually going back! What have I done? I've, I've done something! Oh, what have I done? <laughs> of course. I took my place and stared towards the horizon while I thought about what would happen now, in this world and others. Even if I made a break for it, I'd become a fugitive, no better than Razor. It would be near impossible to investigate the, the case by myself while on the run in a world I knew so little about. At the very least, I took comfort in the fact that I did everything to, I could to help, even if it turned out like this. Nevertheless, I dreaded going back empty-handed and returning to my old life in our ruined city. Any second now, the teleportation process would start, disintegrating my body before I would reappear on the other side, back in my dying world. I wondered if there was any risk of getting lost somewhere in between worlds. We didn't really know how the portals worked after all. Maybe I would be flung somewhere else in space time, or it might affect my body in some way. I hadn't noticed any unusual changes in my body since I arrived in the dragon's world, but I had no way of knowing if there were potential long-term side effects. I was almost relieved that my adventure was over. Things had turned out far differently than expected. I evaded danger, got swept into a murder investigation, and met incredible intelligent beings from several different species. It had certainly been a time to remember. With that thought, I closed my eyes, embraced myself for the moment that would come any second now. But that moment never came. The next thing that did happen was that I heard Sebastian's voice. It's not working. Oh, thank goodness. Oh! Oh, yes! Are you joking again? No, really, it's not working. Wait, what is this? Razor's screwed with it! Someone's screwed with it! Oh, no! Oh, it's broken! Can you fix it? I don't think so. This doesn't look like a simple act of vandalism. It looks like some parts were torn out. <laughs> wow. I guess that means I'm not leaving, huh? Not yet, at least. Well, what do we do now? Let's head back. The chief has to know about this right away. All right, before we do that, an hour long recording, I'm gonna be mean, leave this on a cliffhanger for you. Not for me, because I'm going straight back into this after this episode is recorded. Oh man, that took a very solemn turn. I was not expecting Anna to be killed. I was not expecting that whole human backstory. And the fact that I was get <laughs> going to get sent back to the, um, to the human world, which honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if an early end existed. If it did, that, that'd be an interesting kind of choose your own adventure scene uh, type of thing where, um, where like depending on the choices you make, the story ends sooner than other endings. So I, I don't know if, if that actually exists where there, there is a, an early ending um, or whether it's, it, it's broken in every, every variation of the story, but that's kind of... I wouldn't be surprised if that existed, and if it did, that that's kind of cool. Anyway, that episode's over and done with. Let's save this. And, um, yeah. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't done so. Um, I will see you in the next episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. Bye!